There's obviously something in the air or the water here because it's also the home of Andrew Cowan, former rally driver, now a highly successful team manager, and one of Britain's most popular rising motorsport stars, Louise Aitken Walker. Now, this year, Louise has been entered by Vauxhall in the World Rally Championship to compete for the entirely new Ladies' Championship. So it's a very big opportunity, really, for Louise. The first round was in January in the legendary Monte Carlo Rally, which few British rally drivers have entered in recent years, but it's still as difficult and important a rally as ever. Tony Mason went along to follow Louise's fortunes. Aitken Walker, the Monte Carlo rally marked the start of a whole new era. Driving the sole Vauxhall Astra, it was her biggest challenge to date. After 10 years of rallying, mainly in Britain, the former Shepherdess is now in the big time. She's the only British driver, male or female, with a full World Championship rally programme this year. But at this level, you don't just turn up at the start and set off. There's a lot of preparation and practice to be done. Oh, the practice has been really hard. We've uh, practiced the, the stages six, seven times, which means a lot of stage miles. And, uh, you know, to go around all the stages is quite a long road section. And it's actually taken us a fortnight before Christmas. Then we came over on the third after, in, after New Year. And we've been practicing right up until yesterday. So, you know, it's been really hard work. And for Louise, there was another innovation, a new Swedish co-driver to get to know in the shape of Tina Torna. She's a determined driver. And as a co-driver, the thing where you com compare drivers, I, I think, is when they break, you know, when they don't find their brake points. Then that makes you unsure as a co-driver. Louise haven't had any problems with it. I'm very confident that this is going to go good. One of the unique features of the Monte is that it's the only world event with several starting points. Louise chose Reims in northern France, which meant an overnight drive south to the Principality of Monaco. After 24 hours driving and a night's rest, it was the start of the main part of the rally, with world champion Mickey Biazion heading the star-studded list of entrants. But even at this level, things can go wrong. Finnish ace Ari Vatanen began to wonder if his dash back from the Paris-Dakar desert race had been worth it. For Louise, it was the chance to meet her much-feared Italian rival in the Ladies' World Championship, Paola De Martini, and discuss the year's events. As the cars left Monte Carlo for three days to charge north into the French Alps, Louise had the bit between her teeth. She hurtled over the closed country road, taking up to a minute a stage off Paola. Her luck was in, and it was her 30th birthday to boot. The team was working well. Quick left, into flag right. There are several service points every day where there's not only fuel and water, but new tyres and a thorough checkup for the car. At the first major halt, who should be next to the Vauxhall camp and the dreaded Paola? She sent over her spies, but Louise wasn't revealing much. Very sloppy. Yeah. Yeah. So, the tower is good? Yeah, it's okay. Top Gear sent a spy of its own. How's it going? Good? Not good. No? No good? No, the engine is finished. Is it? The engine is. No. Not jeering. It's the tyres. Louise was concentrating on tyres. Tyre choice is critical on the Monte, and there are tyre technicians to be dealt with at every turn. Will we put cut rears on? Ah, ah. Yes. Yes. I think it's better. It will work, yes. OK. Yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. OK. I think it will be better for this one only. OK. Yeah? To yes. try. To try and see. Oui? We have a, the yes. S0R. Adi Rize. Oui. So how are you going? Big what problems and you? problems of tyre choice? No, no, it's just the, the lingo over no, here. Well, yeah, no, no, the tyres are OK. Uh, that last stage was really slippy and, uh, you know, sliding about a bit, so we need the tyres to warm up a lot quicker. 
And one of the ways of doing this is to wiggle the car from side to side, traffic permitting, of course. The weather was already on Louise's side. When the four-wheel drive Lancia Delta of DDA Oriel stormed into the lead, the unusual absence of snow meant that the two-wheel drive Astra wasn't far behind. It was starting to nudge onto the leaderboard in spite of the threatening drops that lurked menacingly round every blind bend. 350 miles from Monte Carlo, it looked as though the spring-like conditions might be the deciding factor. Well, this is a Monte Carlo rally with a difference. In fact, it's really quite warm here at Aubenas in the French Alps. Now, when Louise started this rally, she said she'd be happy to be in 15th position at the finish. But here, at the end of the first night, she's in 13th place, she's leading her class, and she's the leading lady. Not a bad birthday present. Rally is one of France's greatest sporting events. By the second day, it was clear from the interest and newspaper coverage that the crowds were warming to the lady from Scotland. The Astra was clocking speeds of over 115 miles an hour, as the fast open roads allowed Louise to use the racing skills she'd acquired in last season's British Saloon Car Championship. She was pulling well clear of Paola, who now had both engine problems and a virus. Car and driver were sounding distinctly rough and would retire soon. But it wasn't all plain sailing for Louise and the Vauxhall team. There'd been two problems with the gearbox, a broken oil seal and a damaged cluster, the collection of cogs that select the six main ratios. Louise didn't seem at all flustered by it. We had the first and second gear that started to stick and we couldn't get out of second gear. But, uh, you know, the mechanics did a fantastic job when we got to the end of the stage. They changed the cluster in eight minutes, so that's absolutely amazing. Did that drop you a bit of time then on the stage? Um, oh, only about half a minute, that was all. As the rally reached higher ground, it looked as though ice might be a serious problem for the first time. Yeah. Stage 11, I'm not looking forward to it at all because there's seemingly a lot of ice in it and uh, it's going to be really slippy. I'll be glad when I see the end of this one. To help the drivers with ice in the mountains, the top teams employ ice note crews, another unique aspect of the Monte Carlo. Driving standard road cars, they go over the stages before the roads are closed. Vauxhall employed none other than British champion David Llewellyn with Mike Nicholson. The places where ice occurs are recorded on the pace notes of the route the drivers have written in practice. Exact locations are then discussed with Louise and Tina. On the hairpin right at there, that junction, you have an ice patch and it's on the braking as well, so be a little careful as you come into it. Good luck. But although by the start of the third day there was snow on the top of the mountains, there was still none on the road, and this was proving to be the fastest Monte Carlo for many a year. Louise was loving it, and amazingly brought the Astra into the top ten ahead of many more powerful cars. To get points towards the Ladies' World Championship, she had to finish in the top 20. It was vital she kept up a fast pace, but not too fast. Driving at these speeds, it's a fine line between success and failure, as Michael Erickson found out. And not once, but twice. Luckily, no one was badly hurt in either incident. But driving in these World Championship events isn't just about driving on the limit all the time. Strategy and tactics come to the fore. Despite her high position, Louise claimed to be driving at only eight tenths of her ability. Trying to keep up with local man Delacour in his Peugeot for a class win could have blown her chances for the Ladies' Cup. And the remaining serious ladies' threat, Pascal Naray, was well down the field. We're changing our tactics a little bit all the time. The other girls 18 minutes down really were, were pulling away. So now all my intention is to keep her in the top 20. So I've got to keep my eye on the 20th place, which was three minutes 18 up. And I really want five minutes there before the last night, because if it freezes, if we do get some snow flurries, then we're in problems. 
Team tactics are a big part of World Championship rallying. The amount of effort put into a rally team is mind-boggling to say the least. With helicopters and service cars fluttering around like old mother hens, it's big, big business. Although it looks more at home in an airing cupboard, this is a set of tyre warmers from Formula One. But with a season costing millions, team managers buy all the technology they can lay their hands on. There's a lot more pressure than there used to be. You know, I thought when I first got involved in driving that uh, the team manager just wandered around and ate in the best restaurants, but uh, I'm afraid that's all changed. To be competitive, you've got to have everything, and you've got to think of every eventuality. I mean, for example, on this event to run two cars, we had 70 people. You know, we had 17 service vans, including the service trucks and things like that. This obviously costs a lot of money. When an aircraft flying during the rally at all times, controlling the ice note crews, controlling the service crews, and uh, without these, this sort of cover, I mean, you wouldn't be competitive. I'm very, very happy for Louise, the way she's coped with it, competing in Monte Carlo, absolutely at the top level, and doing so well is just, just brilliant. After three days of rallying, there was a day's rest back in Monte Carlo, and then it was up into the mountains again for the final ten crowd line stages. This is where the rally is usually decided, and this year was no exception, with Didier Oriol in the Lancia narrowly beating Carlos Sainz in the Toyota. The pressure was clearly on in the Vauxhall, and Louise actually went off the road during the final stages. She'd never worked so hard in her life and had even been out practicing the previous night when most of the other drivers were asleep. In the end, it all paid off. Louise stormed through, dropping only one place, in spite of the mishap, to finish a magnificent 11th place overall with 20 points towards her World Ladies Championship. And of course, she also won the prestigious Coupe des Dames on this event, joining illustrious names like Sheila Van Damme and Pat Moss. Great, what about that then? Well, what about that? That was hard work. Harder than you expected? No, well, it was very tough at night, you know. Um, the last ten stages were really quite tough, but, uh, you know, it's all been well worthwhile and the uh, car's been absolutely fantastic. And So the plan of campaign for the year looks to be on target? Well, I hope so. If, you know, if we can have another seven, six of these, it should be good. And so, all that was left was a gentle toddle up to the cobbled courtyard of Monaco's fairy tale palace and a meeting with Prince Rainier to collect the silverware. For the farmer's daughter from the Scottish borders, it had been a long, hard road. But Louise Aitken Walker had shown that she was among the very best rally drivers in the world. Well, after that triumph, things didn't go quite so well for Louise in the second round of the World Championship in Portugal. In fact, she had a horrific accident, with the car plunging and somersaulting down a cliff face before diving into a lake and becoming submerged. She and her co-driver Tina were very lucky indeed to escape with their lives. We'll be glad to hear she's now fully recovered, relaxing at her home here in Duns and really looking forward to the rally of Corsica in May.